If we had violins, they'd be playing right now because this is the final edition of Squawk. I know, hold your horses, don't cry. We have news, breaking news this evening. We'll share that all just a little bit later. But coming up on Squawk tonight, we have got Mark Whitten from Kaizen Asset Management. We've got Sasha Narishkin from Vestact. We've got Chris Gilmore from Absa Investments. And of course, we've got Gary Boyson from Funani Private Clients. They're all on the Uber Super final edition of Squawk tonight here on CNBC. This is Squawk, the final edition. I'm Bruce Whitfield on CNBC Africa, first in business worldwide. Welcome to the program this evening. I come late, look at this. Well, you weren't on time. Three chaps on my couch, and Whitten, there, what's he got a mic, he's gonna sing uh, <laughs> my way to you. What's <laughs> uh, Whit Whitten is doing karaoke later on. That is the big treat this evening. Yes. I did introduce everybody what else. I wasn't, on my couch? I wasn't aware that you were coming, sorry. Please don't be precious about your couch. Have a seat on the, I, thought, I don't wonder why there was a spare chair. It was the ghost of David Shapiro. But thanks for joining us as well, David Shapiro. Pleasure. But this being, okay guys, the, these are the rules, all right? This is the final edition of Squawk. You guys have been very generous contributors to Squawk over the past 12 months, and we would like to reward you with the final Uber edition participation. There's gonna be like a mug and a plate, and a, yes. it'll be like Prince George's, uh, Prince George's christening, just without the dresses. Okay, so gentlemen, the year's biggest stories. What is your biggest story this year? <laughs> Genuine. I Genuine. Mean, like the market. We have to stick to the, the market. Biggest, the biggest story that impacted investments and yeah, markets. I think year. it has to be the depreciation of the RAND. RAND, your biggest yeah. story. Gary? Oh, I'm still going with uh, this tapering. It's still going on. Tapering. Chris Gilmore? Toss up between the tapering and Nelson Mandela. But that's two. Okay, so you'll go tapering. <laughs> Sasha Narishkin, we're two. The tapering. Twitter IPO that hasn't come. Oh yet. come on, that's not a big story. That's, that's massive. It's huge. Oh come on, a real story that impacts South Africa. Oh, that impacts South Africa. Yes, our real world. Tapering. I don't know. I, I think the uh, AMCU's ascendancy. The AMCU ascendancy. So mine, labour unrest, all of that sort of stuff. Mark, you get the hardest job because you've got to find something different. <laughs> You're not allowed to repeat what they said. Now, I'd have to say it's probably the, the, the slowdown in China. For us, that's been kind of one of the biggest stories this year. It's sort of how unprecedented and, and unforeseen it was, how quickly it came off from last year. Okay, so th those are some, that's a nice spread of ideas. There are a couple of others I'm going to throw at you, chief executive resignations and retirements and all of that sort of stuff. But let's talk about the RAND very quickly. The RAND has had a massive impact on this market. In dollar terms, you're probably flat year Minus on year. Two. Minus two. Minus two percent. So you're actually poorer in global terms right now than where you were at the beginning of the year. If you look at the US markets, uh, the S&P is up 24% this year. Therefore, there's a 26% gap between FS, the uh, S&P 500 and uh, the all share market. And the reason is all the stories that they've brought mm. up here. Slow down mm -hmm. China and etc. But but the tapering story is, is significant here because how much of the S and P's 24% gain is as a result of tapering and the fact that there's this excess liquidity that's been mopped up in markets, Gary? Well, I think I think a huge amount. But also, you know, we've we've got to look at uh, the rand and say it's great for us because of the performance fees. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, you, you're making money out of performance we, we, fees we courtesy measure, of the rand. We measure in rand, so yeah. you, you have to. I mean, that's that's the base for a South African investor. So I mean, you can measure in dollars. I mean, you can measure it against Bitcoin, and then we'll be doing all doing very. <laughs> so, no, I think, uh, yeah, at the, at the moment, uh, you know, on the tapering, sorry, what, what was the question? I can't remember. <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, Sasha, you're so well mannered, you put up your hand like a good schoolboy. I did. I went to the better school in our town, Bruce. <laughs> yes. yes, you did. Um, yes, you're so Bruce, well Bruce, um, <laughs> they had girls there as well. <laughs> <laughs> so did you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bruce, I, I think uh, the, the emerging that. market mm -hmm. currency sell off, I mean, don't view it as the rand against the dollar. I mean, the Indian central bank governor has got a lot of work to do. Indonesians have raised rates, so have the Brazilians, all because of the depreciation in emerging mm. market mm. currencies. So, so it's when not do just we a rand when story do we alone. raise rates in the same way? I think you probably watch the ECB, which are on hold for what do they call it, an extended period of time, mm. and the Fed, who haven't even started tapering yet. So long time still. Mm. I think. Just give me your, th your thoughts. Just going back to what David was talking about. You look at the S and P since 2000, mm. the year 2000, 13 years, it's only marginally higher than it was 13 years yeah. ago. 
So in their currency, in dollar terms, it's been a lousy performer. It's only in the past year or so mm -hmm. that it's come from a, a, well, a couple of years, come from a big low to a, to a big peak. But that's right. not because of exceptional economic performance. No, it's not it's because it's of anything money. fundamental. It's, all about, it's all about cheap money. How does China fit into this Western world, Mr. Asia? <laughs> Well, I mean, it's for a while now, China's been one of the, the strongest drivers of, of global growth. You know, it's always funny to us that people will pay this massive premium for a South African company that's operating in China or is expanding into China. But their market at the moment looks to us, you know, very, very cheap. We, we've had a call on China for a while, which in, in, in rand terms has done very well. In dollar terms, it, it obviously hasn't been a, a great performer. But I think, you know, the world is definitely you know, splitting, if that's the right way, between a, a very much an ascending China and uh, a kind of, uh, call it the Western empires that are starting to, to collapse. I mean, their population demographics are not great. So I think the growth in the biggest cities in the world, the growth in the consumers are gonna come from the China and the India. You know, that's, that's, that's where we're looking. And Africa is still one of the fastest urbanizing continents mm -hmm. in the world. And the Chinese are very aggressive in, in securing their resources. So I think, you know, from our point of view, I would much rather back you know, China from a demographic point of view rather than Europe, which is starting to look like a bit of an old age home. Do, <laughs> do you back an Africa from a demographic point of view versus a China because the Chinese growth story has kind of happened? Or there no, is I enough think, momentum in China to keep that one going ahead of the risk that might yeah, present yeah, itself? I, I, think, I think exactly Africa. that. I think there's, China's a much, I think it's a, it's a much better set up, you know, they, they, in terms of functioning and ability. China's, it's, it's, a, it's a controlled state, it's centrally planned, whereas Africa, you've got probably 5,000 different types of leaders trying to, you know, uh, accommodate all different types of views. So I think I'd, I'd prefer to, personally, I'd be backing South African companies expanding into Africa. We still like that story very mm -hmm. much, the okay. likes of the shop rights, et cetera. And, and obviously, the South African companies that are doing well, expanding into China and taking advantage of this, this growing consumer class there that is very aspirant and also wants you know, cell phones and cars and fridges and high protein diets and things like that. You know, so, so that's we've got lots to get through this evening, so I'm going to go through them quite quickly. I think it was you, Sasha, who mentioned the, the rise of Amku. Um, mm. And the year started with an absolute bang, when Anglo-American Platinum came out and said, we want to cut, I think, 12,000 jobs, and we need to close two shafts. Um, the mines minister, Susan Shibangu, um, told uh, Chris Griffith what she thought of that idea. And they've basically been on hold since then, mm. but that was just the start of it. And mm. what has happened is the fall from grace of NUM, the rise of AMCU, and the greater politicization of the union environment, not only in mining, but across other industries as well. And the question is, who do those people vote for in an upcoming election next year, seemingly lost the faith with the tripartite alliance? You know, and that's a whole household shift too. So it's not just one vote. We're talking about one member, one vote. We're talking about whole households. Are those people tending to side with the EFF, as many people think they might? Or are those people just simply going to become, uh, you know, fall out of the voting base and just say, I'd rather vote for nobody? Because it is, we're very close to elections. I think inside the next six months, we've got to have elections in South Africa. Mm. And although we've seen some politicking in South Africa, uh, uh, December is going to be quite fun, I can imagine. Well, it'll give us something to talk about through December. Yes. But um, I've got a bet going with Sasha, and I said I believe that Ahang will get more votes in next year's no, no, election. No, I said Ahang. You said EFF. I did not say that. <laughs> go back, rewind. Have okay. a look at the show. Did, did I say the EFF would get more votes yes. than Ahang? Well, of yes. course I'm right. So I said the EFF would get more votes than Ahang, and I'm more convinced that ever rand, then that would be the case. I'm looking forward who to wants my to, milkshake. Who, yeah. who wants to put, put money on the table on this in t as we look forward in the greater politicized South African environment as to whether or not um, an academic, and a very nice academic, in Mampela Rampele, um, is going to make uh, get more votes at the polls than Julius Malema. Julius Who, Malema. Julius Malema. Yeah, I'm going a Khang. Yeah. You're going a Khang, uh, okay, so it's two all so far. Yeah, Chris Gilmore? Hung, definitely in Mampela. Mm -hmm. Mampela, three, two. Mark? So I have to choose. You have to choose. Well, <laughs> one of them is going to get more I, I votes. Just, I just don't bother voting, to be honest with you, because to me, it's like whoever lands up in power is going to be the same any which way. But I would have to say. But okay, this is a <laughs> hypothetical. The same answers, but I think, yeah, I think, I think Julius definitely appeals to a much wider demographic and a much mm. wider kind of, what's the right word? I don't want to use. I don't want to swear on air, but a very annoyed, you know, Electric. a lower Electric, LSM yeah. that are really yeah. still 
without services, without education. And, and, and it was in the newspaper today where Mampela said that, that the, the, the best way to exclude a person from society is to not give them an education. Absolutely. So obviously these are the people that, that, that I think Julius will appeal to. They, you know, he's militant, he's okay. got energy, and he's, he's definitely he's not afraid to, to take a stand on something. You know, so so it's, it's three all. The, 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 mm. the couch sitters um, are the Akhang supporters. Yes. They sit in couched comfort. Uh -huh. um, the rest of us on the precarious high chairs, um, I believe that EFF is... Plus, getting, plus plus the red Beret does look a lot better. The I red Beret is very <laughs> fetching. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on to the reality of chief executive resignations. It was a big story on the year. Graham Mackay got sick, of course. He was planning mm -hmm. to step down before the end of this year. You know him well, Chris Gilmore. Um, but probably the best managed transition of executive power, certainly as far as back as I can remember, has been SAB Miller. From Graham Mackay to Alan Clark, even though there was a crisis uh, with, with, uh, with Graham Mackay having to go and take time off to get, to get well, it, it was completely seamless. No, you're right. Look, uh, I can remember when I was an honest journalist with the FM some years ago. We wrote oh, a sorry, the yeah, honest yeah, journalist yeah. at the <laughs> FM. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and uh, we wrote a story on uh, succession in SAB. That was about 2004, 2005 sometime. And even in those days, Alan Clark was the clear successor, without a shadow of a doubt. A few other people like Mark Bowman uh, came close. But, um, you know, the way they've handled it, as you say, has been absolutely fantastic. Really, really seamless. Both very cerebral guys. Um, it's going to be a different style. I mean, Graham, I think, quite self-effacing, very, very clever bloke, but didn't really like the media. I think Alan is much more uh, at home with the media, and he's in a different uh, set of circumstances. Mm -hmm. Graham uh, was, mm -hmm. a, was an acquirer. Bruce, you know, yeah. you know what's wonderful about SA Breweries is that when the head, when there's a new head appointed, you don't get massive resignations, which yeah. you found <laughs> with, with the Should other with the banks. Because somebody gets peed off and says, "Well, I'm not. I'm you, not you, number one. You talk I'm about going to find another." You think job. about Peter Wartenhood going to Deutsche you, Bank after Well, it's not happened. It's CEO happened of regularly Bank, yeah. with a number of companies. Mm. Soon as someone, soon as an appointee is made, you find the rest of the team, the executive team, starts dissipating and going somewhere else. Simply, they wanted their job. Yet, SA Breweries has managed that process very, very well. FNB managed it as well. Uh, Gary, you look at Anglo Gold and Anglo American, Anglo Gold Ashanti. You put uh, Srinivasan Venkata Krishnan. Mm. Say that. Um, <laughs> uh, into the top job at Anglo Gold Ashanti, move uh, Mark Kitty finally to Anglo American. The companies that have not done it particularly well have announced chief executive resignations with no succession plan in place. Imperial and Avenge, a bit disappointing. Two good guys with no obvious succession plan in place. That's disappointing, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit. I, I mean, I think I think the, the Mark Kudafani move went exceptionally smoothly, and that uh, I mean, you know, you saw the share price reaction in that as well. Uh, Aveng, I mean, construction at the moment, you know, I don't think anyone wants to be a CEO of a construction firm, and I think I think you know, uh, you know, the, the stepping down at Aveng, it was unfortunate because I think he got lumbered with a lot of problems that weren't his. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. It's uh, yeah. I mean, he shouldn't have been there. He was a, he was <laughs> he was a was media he man. He was the chief executive. Chief, chief, so, yes. Exactly. Yeah. How do, you know, going into a construction <laughs> company, I think yeah. the first time he put on a hat was when he walked in there, a hard hat. Yeah. Oh, but that's happened but a lot across South African no, industry. No, no. It, it has happened. Look at school. What's it all? Arsenal Middle. Arsenal Middle. <laughs> Absolutely right. Um, another one, of course, that is, um, and you talk about putting on hard mm -hmm. hats, construction sector collusion has been another story this mm -hmm. year, but we kind of knew it and it's working its way through the system. Is that story done? Anybody, Sasha? Mm -hmm. I think so. Is it worth yeah. buying them? Gee, I don't know, it depends who you are. If you're brave and you can see out the cycles, the peaks and troughs, I don't know, just not for our private clients. They're too far apart, the peaks and the troughs. And you can't explain that to uh, yeah. you know, some people earning cyclicality. I think in big funds, they definitely have their place. But um, Sasha, we're in a country where there's so much corruption, it's so widespread, that these stories just come and go. You know, we just mm. move on. To the next story. Uh, have we moved on from African Bank, I wonder? African Bank came out with a recent profit warning, uh, the, about the third in six months, 90% profit decline now, clutching onto, uh, onto making profits. At 17 rand or thereabouts, do we buy African Bank? Is anybody on this couch and on the precarious high chairs willing to buy African Bank? Gary, you're an adventurous guy. Come yeah, on. <laughs> you know, I'm quite vocal about not buying African Bank. So He's got a good word, yeah. which he uses quite often, avoid. Avoid. <laughs> avoid. I think, avoid. I think you know, we, we were buyers at around 14 you know, the day yeah. that their, mm. their, their second mm. profit warning came out and somebody drilled them in the auction down to like 12 95 13 mm. bucks. We were buyers there and that, you know, we, we think it would be a great time to follow your rights in, you know, if, if it's going to trade below mm. that at 11 Rand. But I agree, you know, it, at this point, the South African consumer, their, 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 um, their debt to, to servicing or their income to debt ratio is not as high as it was in 2007 and 8, but they're still kind of limping through the cycle. And you can see that, uh, 
you know, that, that, that um, unsecured lending has fallen off a cliff. I, I do think that he's, he's um, lost a lot of credibility with the market mm -hmm. by not just disclosing, you know, how, how bad things were and how fast they did come off. But at some point, I mean, this, it, it's not a business that's crippled. It's just a business that's going through a, a really bad space. But, but it's a business in a sector that's going through a bad space. Bobby Gotson at the big mining in Daba this week has been criticizing um, the Ghana She order system and saying if he was a mine manager, he would have told the, 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 uh, the, the micro lenders to collect their own debts and not expect the deductions from salaries because he looks back to Marikana just over a year ago and said that was a clear catalyst for many of the crises that we face now. Michael lending has got a lot to answer for. Final word on micro lending? Chris, I think rich people in this country are also indebted, you know. Are you? Well, I'm not rich, <laughs> but I mean... Uh, but you're indebted. <laughs> well, we all are to some extent, but I think, you know, that part of the market is, um, you know, a lot, very overstated, but I think... Sounding like the uh, subprime crisis. Oh, no, it's only a certain sector of the market. <laughs> no, I just said rich people are yeah, also I indebted. I think it affects yeah. the whole market. Yeah. Dead, right? you, know, you go back to, to the sector that's lost the most jobs over the last five years, and it's been construction. Construction mm -hmm. has shed the most jobs. And it's actually quite sad because there was a lot of upskilling into the into the World Cup and into all the infrastructure spend. And there's this trillion rand infrastructure fund, but we've seen, I mean, we need new power stations. There's no mm. coal three as of yeah. yet. There's no big chunky projects like you know the Gauteng Freeway Improvement Project or another Gau train or, and that's what that's what we need. And I just think that's the problem is with the with our current account deficit and budget deficit, government doesn't have the ability to exit, they don't have the cash to fund these things. Mm. So unemployment's gonna continue to stay high, and I think you know that's one of the reasons why these micro lenders have have taken the foot off the pedals because they can see there's just these guys are borrowing to survive rather than not, not just to, to pay for luxuries. You're watching the final squawk here on CNBC Africa. I'm Bruce Whitfield. We've got David Shapiro. We've got Gary Boysons. We've got Chris Gilmore. We've got Sasha Nerishkin. And we've got Mark Witten, who have been regular guests over the past year of this show. And uh, what the producers have decided in their wisdom is to bring a lovely... Okay, no, they've, okay, they've sent Arabile and said there was going to be a lovely assistant. <laughs> we looked at the budgets um, and he could have cleaned the goldfish bowl, but that's okay. What they've done is that they have written a whole series of topics on these bits of paper. I have no idea what's on these bits of paper. And we're then going to have to spontaneously combust or we're going to have to come up with making sense out of some of the biggest issues that they regard as important this year. Uh, Jamaica athletes is not a market story. I mean, they took lots of drugs and stuff, but it's not a market story. We'll discount that one. Let's see whether or not there's anything any decent, anything decent on these bits of paper. Um, on this piece of paper, the Sharks. Any Sharks fans on the couch? <laughs> any Sharks fans on the couch? Not even Mark Whitten. Don't you come from the Sharks part of the world? No, I'd rather stick needles in my eyes. Okay, so. there we go. Fine. <laughs> um, the producers aren't doing very well on this particular front. Let's see um, what they've got on this one. Nike. Yes. Okay, it's been the, uh, the year of, of bad mm. news for Nike. Or Nike no, bad news. Brilliant. brilliant. Hey, yeah. Trading at all time high. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Come on. Oh. That Adidas. You heard Mark earlier in the show talking about the Chinese consumer. If you want to participate, you want to benefit from it, Nike, Adidas. Mm. Okay, Nike Two record topics. highs. Do, mm. you buy, do, you, do you buy it for your clients at these sorts of levels? Yes. Mm. You do, you continue. Yes. It's running, is it? Yes. Yeah, I mean, the sweatshops <laughs> have moved to, to Vietnam, so. Okay, oh dear. I shouldn't have made a running joke. Oscar Pistorius. Um, is, is there a sponsor <laughs> that will go anywhere near him? Um, it's too you, soon, Derek. Too uh, soon. It's, well, it'll, it'll, it'll never, never gonna happen. happen. <laughs> it's never going to happen. You, you don't shoot people um, mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> and get away with it. No, it's be good looking people. No, exactly <laughs> not. Uh, Chris Kilmore, um, is Oscar Pistorius ever going to rise in the, in the public eye ever again? It depends what happens in the, uh, the court case. It does. And uh, that keeps on getting postponed, of course. So, it does. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Gareth Bale. <laughs> oh, gutted. Gutted. Why are you gutted? Because I'm a secret to Spurs fan. I'm a closet Spurs fan. Gutted that he went to Real Madrid. Okay, fine. I'm, I'm, still, well I'm still waiting for something interesting yeah, related no. to markets. Uh, <laughs> phone tapping. No, that's not markets either. The producers really <laughs> haven't been covering <laughs> themselves. <laughs> Gary Boyson, you're answering the next one. SAFA, South African Football Association. Avoid. Avoid. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> mo moving on. Uh, finally, uh, Elon Musk. There's something we can find. Yeah. 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 Now, there people, is a, yeah. one of probably our greatest exports since SAB Miller. Hey? I agree. I agree. And Thank I think he's, he's, he's probably the next, if not the next Steve Jobs. I mean, he's probably going to be one of the wealthier people in the world. 
um, that Tesla to us is, is one of the most brilliant companies mm. around. Yeah. Mm. Um, unfortunately, they've had a, one or two accidents lately where the cars have caught fire. Well, but one car <laughs> caught fire. <laughs> two, there two was actually, one in Mexico as well. Yeah, but, um, yeah, but that, I, I do rate that him, I mean, because that, of the car's that, that car is unbelievable. I mean, it's taken, I think he's like almost leapfrogged, um, you know, the competition in terms of what BMW is producing and the Prius and all the rest of it. And he's South African, so mm. um, from Pretoria. Still, from Pretoria. Pretoria. Yeah. He's still selling rockets. He's selling solar panels. Solar, Those companies yeah, are doing well. Solar mm. City's doing very well. And and that the best thing about him is Happily. that he mm. invests all his money. He, he does. doesn't. He doesn't hold back. He's going to go bust he, three he times before he makes it really. Do you know that he guarantees the, the residual value of those cars after three mm. years, and he guarantees it with his mm. personal cash, his PA cash, mm. not his company cash. Okay. And they're rolling out aggressively into Europe, and eventually they'll, they'll hopefully they're actually opening an office here in Johannesburg in the next year or so. Well, I'm well, quite sure where we're going to charge the cars, the electricity. <laughs> but <laughs> no, we might not be able to charge the cars. But uh, the president signed a deal with uh, the DRC to get the Great Inga project. Um, that'll come in 20 years, so we'll be fine on that front. Uh, uh, Gary Boyson, have you twerked? Twerking is on my list. <laughs> Are you a twerker? Up to twerk. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> okay, no, no choice. All right, thank goodness <laughs> for that. Um, no, but you've got to hand it to Miley Cyrus. I mean, we love Miley Cyrus. <laughs> I think we, 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 She's He's thinking, who's Miley Cyrus? <laughs> <laughs> who, is, who is Miles Cyrus? <laughs> yes. no, I'm still Sun. a Cliff Richard fan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, finally, e-tolls. Hey, they've got to come through. They've got to happen. Uh, the bond market mm. requires it. Our country rating, actually, on a more serious note, mm. requires that e-tolls are implemented. Whether you like them or not, whether you dislike the way in which the money has been spent and where the money is going to go through the collection process. And we're process. Joburg. We're not Malawi. And we're not yes. Malawi. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, we've got time for one more. Producers. <laughs> one more, one more, one more. Uh, let's have a last we'll look at the last one. Uh, Edward Snowden. Who cares about <laughs> Edward Snowden? He's shopping in Russia, bringing up Russia's GDP, so that's very nice. Uh, and the final... Bruce Whitfield. No, the less said about that, the better. <laughs> I tell you what, in a moment, let's do the biggest winners and losers of the year so far. Um, I hope you enjoyed the goldfish bowl. Can I throw the goldfish bowl at my shoulder? <laughs> now, that would make great television. Um, anything better than that would be for us to do in the Tlantlanene in one of these chairs. Um, and uh, yeah, it's more likely to be me than David Shapiro. But coming up in a moment, uh, we're going to do the year's biggest, win biggest winners and losers. Just cast back in your mind to the 1st of January this year. Think which shares in your top five have been the biggest performer and then the worst performers? And I'm going to throw around our couch and onto the twerky chairs this evening. <laughs> Just which one of South Africa's big companies is the country's best performer in a moment? The producers are rushing us. You know who's on the couch. The top performing share on the JSC for the year 2013 is Mark Whitten. Mundy. Is that Coronation? Woolies. Go year A for Coronation. Your age coronation. Sorry, I, I think I, I, coronation. I only look at the top 40, so for me, anything outside no, of that is kind of irrelevant. But, but, no, but you're doing absolutely fine because coronation most certainly is the best performer, mm. more than 100% return so far this year. Mondi is very, very close, up 90%. So it wasn't a bad bet. It was Mondi mm. wasn't a bad bet. EOH doesn't make it into the top uh, top lot. The one that surprises me most, I think, is Nasbat. And I think it's probably Why? surprised most market punters other than Sasha Narishkin. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Why does it not surprise you that Nasbat, this huge giant of a business which started the year, at 500 bucks, go up 70% all the way to over 900. I, I don't think many people understand what 10 cent is. Mm -hmm. And 10 cent is essentially 85% of that share price. Mm -hmm. No, it is, and we understand what 10 cent is, and we understand that it makes 85% of the share price. But Mark Whitten, you're telling us you're worried about China. If you're worried about China, should you be worried about 10 cent and by implication then NASPAR? Yeah, I think, you know, like all social media, it, it, it generates a lot of traffic, but I'm not quite sure how they monetize that business model. I mean, gaming is, is the majority of their income. So, you know, from my point of view, I just don't see how that, that PE is going to unwind. There's, I would prefer to be on, in terms of the, the, the service providers, the people that are providing the data, the Googles of this world, or in our case, the Vodacoms locally. You know, it's like who made money during the gold rush? It wasn't the gold miners. It was the Levi Strauss and yeah. co-selling the, 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 the pickets and all the rest of it. Um, so, no, I, I don't. I think it's, it's a great story. I think that... Um, you know, Kurzbeck has done exceptionally well, but I just find it very expensive. It reminds me of the, the, the dot-com sort of bubble where it's like you're not really understanding the business model and this time it'll be different. And I look at that WeChat app and all the rest of it, and I think some guy in a shack in Brazil is going to invent an app that or a business that potentially could, uh, could
could, could, could take them out. Not take them out, but... I've, I've always wanted to get the video wall. David, if you look over your shoulder at the video wall, of course, ah. Coronation at the top. Um, and then Wonder. Capital and Counties, the fifth best mm. performer on the year so far. But that's got to be a, just a currency story, surely. It's a recovery yeah. story. Yeah. Yeah. Is it a recovery yeah, story? A recovery in the, in the British, yeah, in the UK British housing market. market. They had a lot of stuff in the West End yeah. that, I mean, crashed pretty hard and yeah. bouncing Mortgages back. are also, the, the issue of mortgages in the UK are also at record levels in that. So I think, I think that side of the market very strong. I was in the West End a couple mm. of weeks ago and you still can't move in the West End, mm. which is good for the West mm. End and good for capital and counties. Mm. Okay, so on that particular front, let's move on to the big losers. Uh, and the biggest loser of the year, don't look at the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> haven't looked at it. It's okay. got to be a gold company. It is a gold yeah. company. And, and, any bets, Gary? Gold or Goldfields, one yeah. of them. Biggest loser of the year uh, so far? Yeah, TikTok. No, I'll go with... Uh, you can look here, it's easier. Amplats, okay. Amplats are, uh, are not even on the list. <laughs> Chris Gilmore? <laughs> DRD Gold? DRD Gold's not on the list. No. I don't know if we che even checked. <laughs> I've cheated. I've looked at the So what, what do you think it is? I think three out of the five are gold companies. Jeez, you're one's a genius. platinum uh, company. Mark, what's <laughs> I think? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, th I think the surprising one for me, which isn't on the list, I suppose, but is Kumba, which has really had a dismal performance. The Kumba's like been in the last couple of months, where mm -hmm. the last six weeks or so, it's fallen very, very rapidly. But yeah, the biggest loser of the year is Harmony, down more than lost half its value. So is Goldfields mm -hmm. almost. African Bank in there as well, mm -hmm. uh, down by about 50%. It's actually held up remarkably well this year, considering the huge surge of bad news that we've seen out of African Bank and the Gold Shanty, and of course Impala Platinum. Anglo, uh, it's yeah, Anglo Platts is held up better than Impala. Any surprises on that list? I don't think there are. Mm -hmm. Bruce, if I had to ask any one of these people, would they buy any of those companies now? Would anyone on this couch <laughs> or on these rickety chairs buy any one of those companies no. today for next year? No. <laughs> no, I wouldn't touch the golds, but I mean, I, yeah. I like platinum. I don't like Impala Platinum as a company, but I do like platinum. I mean, I'll buy an ETF. Mm. I'll buy a platinum, yeah. ETF. Buy, buy a platinum mm. ETF, but ETF. nothing on the losers' board. Is there anything on the winners' board of the likes of Coronation, Mondi, Nasbass, or Capital and Counties that you would buy? Nasbass. You yeah. would buy Nasbass. <laughs> At 950 <laughs> bucks, you'd buy Nasbass. A lot of Chinese users. A lot, a okay. lot, a lot, a lot of Chinese users. Chris Gilmore, your head's about to fall off your shoulders. Mm. You agree? Yeah, we'd buy Nasbass. We've got a target price about 1500 bucks in this mm. thing. My word. Yeah. Sasha? Nasbass. Mm. Gary? Yeah, also Nasbass. Yeah, we're buying it. At the Are they all completely <laughs> certifiably <laughs> mad, Mark? No, this time it's different. It's like a rocket just going straight up. It doesn't <laughs> take a break. It doesn't <laughs> come back down. <laughs> you know, that, that PE is going to, you're going to struggle to unwind that PE. That's, that's just my view. And on that point, we will leave it. That's the end of Squawk forever. Nobody even brought tissues. I can't believe it. So hurtful. Um, my thanks to my guests this evening. Thank you for the, for the violin. The trouble of this country, too many violins. Um, that is from Mark Whitten and from Sasha Nubishkin and from Chris Kibble and from Gary Boysons and from David Shapiro who's been here practically every single week over the last 50 or so and also other guests we've had on. Uh, they've cut the budget so much on the show we don't even have an autocue. Um, so Ian Crookshanks and Mark Ingham and Chris Hart and Nick Normansmith and Viv Governor, even Michael Yordan made a guest appearance. Uh, he came on the show and then they made him CEO of the year. So if you'd like to be CEO of the year, why don't you join me on the new show uh, that starts in the middle of this month. It's going to be called Tonight with Bruce Whitfield. And guess what? It's not happening tonight, but it will be tonight with Bruce Whitfield, but just not tonight. More details coming up on that in the next week or so. Thanks for watching. Good night.